The moment I saw Dan and Kalen's work, I texted my manager and basically begged him to figure out how to make a video happen with them. We thought about shooting it in New York, but it was pretty clear after looking at some of the locations that they suggested that Utah was the place to do it. We found very distinct landscapes and a variety of different looks that we could travel to within a few hours. My name is Daniel Riley, and I am the pilot of the big drone that we're using for this music video, um, the big drone to actually carry the LED lights. Um, the drone is called the Freefly Alta 8, and it's typically used to carry big cinematography cameras, but in this case, we've actually outfitted it with eight 100 watt LED chips, and it puts out a lot of light. So when that Alta is up in the air, and you flick on the light, it's almost like you turn on an artificial sun. It's really cool. It's in a unique way to kind of light up different landscapes and get a really kind of artistic look that's really never been achieved, you know, before this technology was available. The first location we shot was in a canyon, um, and we kind of got really lucky with the weather. It was right after a fresh snowfall. There happened to be a pretty heavy snowfall that led to some of the more beautiful shots in the video. With the light shining through and bouncing off all of that whiteness, uh, it gave the forest a real surreal glow. My name's Kalen Albert and I'm the aerial camera operator and also I'm running Bcam. We used a DJI Inspire 1 for all the aerial cinematography on this shoot and that was paired with the DJI X5R camera. One of the biggest challenges with a shoot like this is using two drones at the same time and the communication that needs to happen between the two pilots. It can be pretty difficult to frame the light in the shot when you're shooting from another drone. So basically, me and Daniel kind of have to communicate as to what we're doing and the movement that we're doing with both the light and then the camera movement um, to achieve the shot we want. We met Dan and Kalen out in Goblin Valley the next day. It's full of these rocks called hoodoos. And they form because one of their layers is more resistant to erosion than all the others, and you get these really alien shapes because of that. Some of them are over 160 million years old, so they're already kind of from another world. You add to that the light from our drone with the shadows stretching out across the ground, and you've got something that I've never seen before. technically a desert, but it was freezing cold and frost was forming on the drone, so Dan and Kalen needed to hold the batteries in their jackets just to keep them warm enough. It's so dark, you can't see your hand in front of your face. After that, we went and shot some just abandoned gas stations and bridges in like the middle of nowhere, Utah. That was really fun. It was really cold, but we got some great shots. My favorite of those was probably this old bridge that when you shot the light through it, stretched these crazy geometric shapes over the flat ground around it. But what we were really trying to achieve with this drone light is movement of shadows. And that really hasn't been done 
um, using drone technology. We wanted the landscapes to look very surreal. And early on, Ellie and I discussed the idea of having an actress be in the video, but shooting body parts in an equally unique way to match the landscapes that we were gonna shoot with the drones. The shots of the world are directly connected to shots of our actress. Uh, they're meant to convey a sense of isolation. The beam is cordoning off parts of the world into smaller digestible pieces, as if the whole picture is too much for her to process all at once. She doesn't need to confront or acknowledge whatever made her go there, because uh, this place doesn't draw conclusions, it doesn't make connections, it's just a collection of isolated environments uh, where she's cut off. I remember in the hotel the first night, looking at some of the footage, Elliot and I were both extremely excited at how well everything looked. Everything was theoretical until we got in the field with the camera. Even then, wind, rain, just all the elements could have created a lot more of challenge than what we ran into. I wanted to preserve what was special about the footage and my grading. If I pushed it too far in terms of color, uh, it gave the impression that the shots were fake. So, you know, sometimes our natural inclination is to push everything into looking cinematic, but colors like that didn't work for this. So instead I erred on the side of a more gentle look. My main focus was to try to tie all the locations together in a way that you couldn't detect. Elliot did a great job editing it, and he was extremely easy to work with, and it was so helpful to talk to somebody who understood a lot of the technical elements that are lost on a lot of people. I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to work on this shoot. It was really fun. Everyone that uh, we worked with was great. Really happy to take this invention that I basically just built, you know, in my spare time and really put it to work. Down in Goblin Valley or in the forest up here near Salt Lake, um, it was just really surreal having that super bright light overhead illuminating everything like day. It's been a really cool project and I'm really glad to be a part of it.